Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Stefan, and today we're going to continue on with episode 5 of our series of the Tall Swarm on the highest difficulty settings in-game. This is what we're playing with, and this is what we're playing on. Grand Admiral, no scaling, high aggressiveness, and all advanced AI starts. So without further ado, let's resume with our save, shall we? Alrighty, we are back to where we left off in the last episode, and things are actually looking up for our empire. We had just fortified the most critical station over at Sabic, and now we're pretty much invulnerable to any sort of AI threat for the time being. So for now, we'll just internally develop and see where the game takes us. Ooh, a precursor discovery. Interesting. Let's go investigate this. After this is researched, we'll get 5 out of 6 uh, precursor artifacts, and in another decade, we'll be able to get one more, and hopefully get that Ecumenopolis. Uh, it's really only going to be able to serve as a pop center and a factory for alloys, because the only other thing that it can produce are consumer goods, and since we're a swarm, we don't need those. At this point, we're going to want to start building up these synaptic nodes on our planets uh, to further increase our unity production. Uh, while we do have a decent amount of unity production from all these capital buildings on all these planets, uh, the unity production will start to uh, be worth less and less uh, because we're getting more and more over administrative cap. And we're going to want to counter that by just getting more unity out. Simple as that. Ooh, terraforming, finally. Uh, we're gonna need to get some terraforming technology to actually start being able to terraform some of our worlds into hive worlds. Uh, soon enough, we're gonna be able to unlock appropriation and our third ascension slot. And that is gonna mean that we're gonna be able to choose hive worlds. And for hive worlds, we need climate restoration. So let's wait and see and really hope that we get it because if we don't, ooh. Uh, because at this point, we're gonna wanna start getting our energy credit production up and running. And if we don't get the climate restoration tech, it will all be for nothing. Ooh, ecological adaptation. This is going to be also very important in our terraforming efforts, uh, because of course, all our planets are inhabited, and being restricted to terraforming uninhabited worlds uh, is just going to be impossible for us because we have none. And actually the finisher effect is going to be something completely useless to us uh, once we're done terraforming all these worlds into hive worlds. Uh, planetary prospecting adds a random feature to the empire that increases districts. And so having a planet with no district restrictions uh, like a hive world means that we're simply not going to be able to uh, make any use of that. And right now, we don't need to make use of that either. Ooh, another precursor discovery. Finally, we're going to be able to get our Ecumenopolis, so let's go ahead and research that and be ready for the next sign of League activity. <laughs> Climate Restoration, right after that. We just got all three of the necessary techs in a row. Very nice. Thank you, game. And now this is a confirmation that we got to get our energy card production pumping as soon as possible. And... Uh, Wow, that is a big fleet. 5.7k. Uh, I'm a bit scared, especially since they're sending it in along with the 2.7k. Hopefully we don't get declared on, because this station may not fare too well. Now it looks like these guys really like lasers. So let's build up some armored star bases and be ready for their potential attack. Alright, the first league artifact is now recovered, and let's see where this lands. Okay, thank god. 
Uh, sometimes these things spawn connecting to other empires territory and uh, in those situations it's quite bad especially if they hate you uh, such as in our case uh, but our situation went quite well we have our ecumenopolis in the middle of our territory and yeah very good very good size 25 I'm gonna be perfect for our alloy foundry later on uh, however for now we don't quite need it it will be a nice boost to pop production though Alrighty, we have finally discovered the First League Headquarters. Ben Habadis III was the administrative center of the First League throughout most of his existence and served as the seat of our Great Senate. The planet was densely populated with a planet-wide city covering most of the surface. Food had to be imported from other member worlds to support the untold billions living in this enormous metropolis. When the League collapsed, these food shipments ceased virtually overnight. Those with the means departed to other worlds but most of the population remained behind. Mass starvation and anarchy followed as the planet was carved up between warlords and criminal organizations. The population continued to dwindle for a few centuries till the planet had been reduced to little more than a lifeless ghost world. A final epitaph of the First League. Fascinating. This also gives us some extra traditions. Very nice. Uh, let's go for some synchronicity. Uh, it's really going to help out with amenities in our empire with these two traditions. And uh, the extra pop consumption bonus uh, is also quite nice. Awesome, we had finished researching climate restoration, and now we can go ahead and choose these hive worlds. Perfect. Now we can start terraforming our worlds, and uh, this is going to be actually quite expensive. Uh, as far as tomb worlds go, terraforming into a hive world uh, is actually just the same as terraforming it into any other world in terms of uh, time and resources. However, for normal planets, uh, hive worlds are noticeably more expensive, however we don't really need hive worlds for normal planets. Instead, we're going to prioritize our top tomb world with 34 pops, uh, sell off some of our resources to get the necessary energy, and go ahead and order the terraformation. Boom. Now it's only going to take us 20 years until this is done. Uh, one thing that's actually going to help us in uh, reducing the time it takes to terraform the world are terraforming gases. So let's go ahead and uh, purchase some gas and uh, be on our way to successfully terraform this world. Oh no, insults, how awful. They hate me. But I mean, have I done anything wrong with this swarm? Have I harmed anyone? No. I haven't laid a single tooth or nail on those Xenos. Only once have I insulted them. And that one time was against the Annihilators, those who are clearly set out to destroy the galaxy and have repeatedly proven so through their continuous wars. But this swarm, this swarm has done nothing. Oh, looks like those force we were interacting with previously have not been adapted to our environment. Continued interaction between our colonists and the Wandering Force on Skull Prime has revealed that the trees are in possession of some form of rudimentary communal intelligence. They seem to have adapted to our presence and now go out of their way to avoid damaging property of our colonists even without the use of the insect pheromone. Spirits among the colonists have risen. And now, a creature that has been plugged into the network and subordinated through generations of evolution is now happy. Perfect. And now we get even more events from the ever-loving forest. We have learned a great deal by living in the proximity of Wondrake Forest and Skull Prime. Some enterprising colonists have even built homes on the treetops of some of the larger specimens following the forest around as they migrate across the moon. Some of the foremost biologists of the two quintillion IQ swarm have spent time studying these unique trees. Also I've just noticed that the space that I accidentally put in after the two quintillion IQ swarm 
actually shows up in the text. The, the game isn't smart enough to realize that only this part is relevant. So how about this? Now the text will truly be broken. Huh, even the Empire title is uh, lopsided because of that. Nice. Devs, please. I beg you. Have a quality of life update for once. Oh, marvelous. Battleships. Let's research those and be on our way. Uh, eventually, we're just going to want to build up a massive battleship fleet. And while everyone has cruisers or destroyers, we're going to be able to just come in and uh, decimate any enemy that we face. I'll cover this more in a later video, but uh, basically the plan is to just equip long-range weapons, uh, get the rapid deployment doctrine, and uh, just snipe them from long range while taking minimal losses. That way we can campaign deep within enemy territory uh, without having to worry about you know, losing ships and everything, because uh, resupply is a pain and we don't want to face that pain. Uh, one thing that is seemingly broken right now are maintenance drones, because uh, they seem to take a very high job priority, and so you have to manually restrict them so that your pops actually work the jobs that you want. Like 33 amenities are not necessary on a planet that's geared to generate energy, so let's uh, do that. You don't want your amenities to be too low on your planets, uh, and this is something I fail to remedy on this one uh, most clearly. But overall, if you can, uh, go for the actual resource producing jobs. Amenities don't boost uh, the population enough to be worth it. Just don't forget to unrestrict them later. Because that can be even more painful. Uh, building additional maintenance depots and giving more jobs doesn't actually help to alleviate the restriction. And so, you might be at a point where you're building up buildings, but nothing is happening. In which case, you have to always look at your jobs menu if you have ever restricted anything. Like take a look at this, 57 amenities. We really don't need that many. And now let's see if our economy is back to normal. Indeed it is. Darn amenities. One thing I'll actually start doing at this point in the game is uh, start researching some of these technologies that I've avoided previously, such as military tech, and uh, that is to gear up for our future conquest of the galaxy. Simple as that. Alright, at this point we can terraform another world into Hive World, and so let's just go for the second largest tomb world. No big choice. Ooh, zero point reactors. Nice. Uh, once we unlock citadels from the engineering tree, it's going to mean that we're going to be able to uh, have a chance of the mega engineering technology actually start appearing. And uh, we really don't want to miss that because that is a chance to get galactic wonders. And with galactic wonders, we'd be able to, you know, build a couple megastructures. And megastructures are always nice. Although we'd probably finish them after the conquest of the galaxy at the pace we're going. Speaking of the devil, there they are, citadels.
Alrighty, we had now finished our fourth tradition tree, and now we can pick our fourth ascension perk. Uh, before 2.2, uh, when playing tall, I would generally go for galactic wonders at this time. However, since we don't have the mega engineering technology, and uh, we'll probably not have it for quite some time, I'll be going for some evolutionary mastery. With this advanced gene mod technology, we'll secure the future of our nation. And with this assurance for the future, I believe it's a pretty good time to end the episode. Uh, today we have struggled through a lot of internal stuff, and um, in the next episode, the gearing for war will begin. We're right about the time of the year 2300, and uh, that is the time where I generally like to gear up and prepare for the war. Because while well, at that point, um, you would basically just be waiting for the enemy to become absolutely pathetic uh, for you. And uh, I would like to keep this a little exciting. Uh, so we're going to be attacking a little earlier than you normally could. Uh, but that way we'll conquer a lot of the galaxy before facing the endgame crisis. And uh, with that, thanks everyone for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw, please leave a like, subscribe if you want to see more. I have a Discord and a Patreon, links are in the description. And of course, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.